Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is a little bit of a bonus video here for you. So I've noticed in a lot of the groups that I'm in and on the Patreons and stuff that there's a lot of people that are having issues with supports and with things like build plate orientation and just basically hollowing out a model. So I figured in my spare time, I would just go ahead and make a quick video on showing you all how I do everything when it comes to hollowing out a model, slicing it, supports, everything. So also in this video, I'm gonna show you how to eliminate ugly large gaps and seams. That way when you fit your pieces together, you'll have minimal filling and sanding. And a couple other things, I use Chi2 Box. I do not use any other slicer at the moment. So maybe if you're using something else, these settings don't work for you. But again, you kind of get the idea. And another thing, I do not use pre-supported files. Uh, if you're using Lychee, Lychee hates pre-supported files. And uh, I just don't use them. I use auto supports. And I'll show you why here in just a little bit. So this is a simple, easy way, easy to follow method that I use to get really good clean prints like this guy here. So this is the way that I do it. There are tons of other ways. And if you're one of those who has great success the way you're doing your model right now, then you know what? Just to help support the channel by watching the video and by you watching the video helps grow the channel. Keep that in mind. And don't forget if you like this video or if you like any of my other videos, consider subscribing to the channel. And also I have a Patreon. If you can just help with a couple bucks or whatever like that, it's great. That way I can get rid of this stupid microphone here and get me some real equipment around here for crying out loud. But seriously guys, the best way you can support the channel is just by simply watching the videos and it's free. Okay, so here we go. So here I have Chi Chi Box open. I am using the 1.9.3 version and my settings here are of the Linant deck printer. Uh, but what I am going to do today is I'm going to show you how I orientate a model on my printer. I'm going to show you how I hollow out a model as well and do drain holes the whole nine yards. This is how I do everything. Uh, you, what you may do is completely different, but we're just going to go over some quick settings here that's quick and painless and show you how I do everything and I can actually have a model sliced and ready for printing in uh, no time at all. So this is the default uh, layout here. It's not gonna work for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to put this in a weird angle here and I'll explain to you why I'm doing it this way here in just a second. So I'm going to I'm going to print this piece like this and the reason being is because if I did it level with the bottom right here the supports are going to touch that and it's going to take a lot of the details off of there and one thing that I found out is when you're printing these models they don't like to print a flat surface I mean you'll get a lot of uh, a different deformities and take a lot of the way of the details so what I do is I try to angle everything up at an angle like diagonal or something of that nature so that way i will um, actually you know have just a better result and so this piece here i will tell you if you try to print this like this a lot of times what you're going to have is that's a what i call a flat edge and then you'll have a lot of supports on top of that and then this will deform especially when the supports pull away from the fep and you're going to take a lot of the detail away from that so in order to get a good quality print, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to spin it here a little bit, and then I'm going to angle it. That way the leg, the folding leg or the kneeled leg is pointing upward at an angle. That way I can actually get a really good print. Now I am going to be using a little bit more supports, but that's okay. You're going to see what I'm talking about as far as quality. I want to get a quality print. I'm not really too concerned with, um, you know, using up much resin or anything like that because of this right here. So we're, I've got it orientated the way I want it. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hollow it out. So I am going to hollow this wall thickness to a 1.5 millimeter. The highest I ever go to is 1.8. And the reason being is because I don't need 
to use it. That I don't need to hollow it out that thick. There's people doing it two millimeters, two and a half, three millimeters. If that's if you're getting good results from that, then that's fine. Again, this is how I do it. And I'm going to save a little bit on resin from not uh, hollowing it out so thick. Hollowing it out so thick can lead to splits with a resin being uncured and uh, not curing all the way through when you uh, hit it with a UV light. So I'm also going to use a 5% grid 3D infill structure. Now this is not a true infill and we'll show you exactly what I am talking about on this right here. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, go through the process of hollowing this out. It takes just a minute, of course. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and speed it up here. Now let's go back through this process right here. If you go down right here, you'll see those actual structures inside the model. And all that does is provide a stability uh, for the model. And I like that because if something happens to where um, we know resin can shrink and warp and all kinds of other stuff, but this actually helps maintain its structure and maintain its uh, integrity uh, as far as the model is concerned. So once I have all that hollowed out, then I'm going to go ahead and add drain holes. Now what I typically do is I go as big as five millimeters uh, or as small as like two millimeters. Anything smaller than that, you're kind of defeating the purpose. So one thing that I like to do is I like to add drain holes anywhere I possibly can. Uh, the reason being is because A, I want to drain the resin out. And the second thing is because of suction issues. So if you have a lot of suction issues, then you're basically going to have it tear away from the FEP and uh, it can cause uh, all kinds of havoc and stuff in your model. Another thing that I do is with the drain holes, I try to make sure that I am putting in drainage on the top and the bottom of the model. Reason being is because I want uh, resin to drain out of both ends. And again, that helps save a lot of your resin. And then on this right here, I will go ahead and put a hole here simply because it is a flat edge here. And you will see I won't have a lot of warping because there won't be any supports right here. So it'll be able to connect to this top part right here and pretty flush and not have any um, major gaps or seams. And here I'm going to go ahead and add a drain hole here if I can. Okay, and I might have to go ahead a little smaller. Let's see, there's one and there's two. So I got one in the top and one in the end. Now I obviously can't put any drain holes here in the hands unless I want to putty it up later on, but for suction purposes and stuff, I have it in both areas. So now that I have that complete, I'm actually going to add supports. We notice here I'm not adding, uh, I don't use pre-supported files. So on this right here, I am using auto supports. I like auto supports. Auto supports are good for the soul. Let me show you what I do differently. So I use medium supports most of the time. Every once in a while I use heavy, but I never use light. The one thing that I do, uh, a little different, uh, as you see, most of this is stock. There are some other little things that I tweak here and there on the middle and in the bottom. And here are the numbers for you to look at. I don't use a raft. Um, I don't think it's necessary. The one thing that I do that's different, if you notice here, is the density percentage. I get mine down to 20%. Now, if you have it by default, I believe it's 50, and that is a lot of supports on your model, which can cause deformities and take away detail. So at 20%, uh, I will have plenty of supports to support the model, and I won't take away a lot of the detail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hit all, and this will auto support uh, both pieces. And then I will just go back here and make sure that everything looks good on the model, make sure all of my pieces are supported and everything is on the build plate adequately. And then after that, I'm just going to slice the model. Once I slice the model, it is ready for printing. And here's an experiment for you. Take your settings, if you're printing at 
2.3 thickness or 3 millimeter thickness versus the 1.5 or the 1.8 and look at how much resin and volume and the weight that you're spending versus what I just showed you. And you'll see that you'll save a little bit on resin and every bit counts. So for this piece here, we're looking at 15 hours and 11 minutes, respectively, you're probably talking about 17 to 18 hours, which if you were to cut this all down into different parts and spend your time uh, in different smaller printers, then you're gonna be spending a lot more time printing. And then after that, I will just save it to the flash drive and print away. All right, guys, and we're back um, here with the same printer, the same settings. And I'm actually gonna show you how I will print a flat surface, like a base if you're doing it in two parts. That way you can actually put it together without having to have a bunch of gaps and seams. And this is very quick and very simple. And so what I'll do is I'll enlarge this a little bit here for you so you can see. All right, we're gonna put that up to 125%. And then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually orientate this to where I will put it on a uh, the curved surface here. Now, this is a highly detailed part and where your density actually comes into play uh, is pieces like this right here. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put this at a diagonal angle. And you notice I'm not putting it on a flat surface. This will actually be up in the air and there will be no supports on this right here. So um, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of putting it at a, a little bit of an angle that way uh, keeps down on uh, a lot of the supports uh, ripping off some of the detail. Again, I'll go through the same process of putting 5% uh, infill and doing the wall thickness, hollowing it out at 1.5 millimeter. As you can see right there, there is the uh, support structure in there. And then on this, I will also go in and I will add as many drain holes as I think that I need. And I will add one here. And I do this, if you do it on this flat surface right here, do not worry because it's not gonna affect how your model goes together and uh, it's not gonna affect any gaps or seams. So I have all this right here done. And then what I will do is I'll pre-support, or I'll you know, auto-support it. And then I'll add the supports with only the 20% density here. And you can actually go down a little further with smaller pieces like this. And the reason being is because all that right there is grabbing a hold of that detail. And you can actually go back through this if you want and remove some of these supports because you don't need all of them. And I would rather remove just a few here and there rather than add a bunch um, and just you know taking all kinds of uh, maybe structural issues or, or not printing at all. So I'll actually remove those and again, you can lower this density down. I would not go below 15%. Um, and I'll show you what that looks like. Well, let's remove all of the supports. Let's go down to 50, well, let's go down to 12%. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna support this on auto supports. And as you can see, you're still gonna get quite a bit. So there's, you're probably gonna have to remove some. Um, but I mean, you can print it like this if you want to, um, typically you don't have a, a lot of this detail on a base. As you can see, it's a lot in there. If it's a flat rounded base, you definitely won't get this, uh, auto supports will not cling onto that as much. And then after that, I'm going to just slice the model and, uh, print it. But I want to make sure that you have your angles up like so. Um, and you will see that it will print all this flat. And when you fit all your pieces together, then uh, you're going to have minimal seams and minimal gaps. I did do a video for this previously, uh, and it will be up in the corner. You can look at that video for a little bit more in detail uh, or in depth of how I do this. Okay, I've got the prints done off the build plate, and I'm going to show you how easy the supports 
and how it looks from the orientation uh, that uh, I set it in on the build plate. So <laughs> this one was actually attached to these supports, but when I pulled it off the build plate, it just broke apart so easily. So as you can see, that's still dripping a little resin here, but if you look at that pretty closely, you see all the detail in there. There's no flat edging or anything like that, just where the supports came from, and it turned out excellent. And this is at the settings that I showed you on the other video. So I did throw in uh, Mr. Knight, the bottom part of his torso, and that turned out damn near perfect. The reason you're seeing the darker gray resin in there is because I had to add resin um, because it was getting a little low. And uh, as you can see, I don't have any shifting or anything like that. It turned out great. So now I'm going to show you on the bottom part right here how I had that all kind of cocked backwards and stuff. Again, there's no flat edging or anything like that. And I'm going to show you how these supports just how flawlessly they just come and break apart. They're like, you don't need hot water. You don't need a, a hand torch or a blow dryer or anything like that. I mean, these just come off here just so easy. I mean, you just squish them and they just break off so effortlessly. And um, yeah, there you go. Okay guys, there you have it. That's just a quick, simple video. This is not meant for a video to be all about views and clicks or whatever like that. If I can help one person out there, then this video served its purpose. So I hope that answers some of the questions on how I get such great results. It's very, very simple. For you guys who've been doing pretty much the same thing, uh, that's awesome. Um, but for you guys that are just really getting into 3D printing and have a lot of questions on it uh, that I see on some of the Patreons and some of the Facebook groups or whatever like that, I hope this helps you out. Thank you for your continued support in the channel. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, also consider subscribing to the channel and check out my Patreon. We do have a private Discord on there as well. And I am working vigorously on some new builds for you guys. So until then, stay safe out there. Print, prep, paint, repeat, and we'll see you.